G'day. In today's video, I'm opening, opening up a MSI GF65 Fin 10UE edition. This one's a very new laptop. It's running the uh, Max P3060 with a Intel i5 10500H. So to begin with, to get in, we're going to use some um, Phillips head screwdriver and we're going to work our way and take out all the screws. As you can see down here, I've already popped the factory uh, seal on this, so I have had a bit of a sneak peek myself. So it also helps that I now I'll know how to get in there quick and easily. So as you can see with the screws there in the screw holder, we don't really have to be too... And we'll get them out of there. As I was saying about the screw holder here, all the screws are the same size, so there's no concern about mixing and matching, because they're all going to be exactly the same, which makes it nice and easy for us. I did have one screw that didn't want to come out the first time, and that was one hidden under the factory seal here. No different this time. So now that we've got it to this stage, we'll actually just quickly show you the model number which is right along here. And to get in there, what I did was I went to the front corner here and just pried with my nails to begin with. Just enough that I could leverage a small gap. Then from there, if you've got a biz a old bank card, I'm going to use a pry tool. Just slide down and twist it just slightly. There we go. Now I'm going to skip this side and get back to here to last. This part along here, the right hand side of the machine, about the most difficult part to get open. So we'll ignore that and just continue along the front here. There we go. Once we get to this stage, what we want to do is pull it down and to the right. So if I twist it down, here and then just be able to slide over and we're off. As you can see we have a few different breather holes around here, here, here on the bottom. I do like the amount of breathing that this has available to it. And here is the beast in question. So just quickly or a quick overview on what we have here. Can zoom you guys in just a fraction. There we go. Over to the right hand, uh, left hand side, we have wireless card, a spare NVMe slot with screw already remaining, another M.2 or NVMe that's already pre installed. We also have two RAM DIMM slots, one battery, which I believe this one is double sided in, so there's no screws holding it, none that I can see. I'm pretty sure it's only adhesive. So if we look at it from the side here, we can see one cell here. So I'm assuming it's a fairly, just a three cell battery in here. Potentially there may be room for larger ones, but there is not much space left in here for a larger battery. If we were going to upgrade the RAM, we'll disconnect the battery over here, which is pretty straightforward. Just put it up on a ledge here. And if we just pull, tug this backwards, or we may need to use a flathead screwdriver or something to that effect. Let's wiggle it back just a little. And I'll zoom you guys in. There we go. We'll come around this side over here and just keep wiggling it. One disconnected battery. So once you've done that, You'd be free to upgrade your RAM, which is very straightforward. Pull these two tabs here out, and it should flick up like so. We have a look here. We can see we've got some Samsung 8 gig, PC4, 3200 megahertz. So, yeah, just fine stuff, nothing fancy. And one thing you do need to make sure when you go to reinstall it. See this little notch here? You gotta line up with the notch on here. 
So we slide that in, push down. Same with the other side, notches out, it shoots up. And we're gonna find we're gonna have an identical stick of ram right here as well. So we'll put that back in. Slide it into the groove so those copper pins are hidden. If you can see that, it's gonna be no good. Make sure it's hidden. And down. Going over to the side here, we have wireless card. Yeah, the free M.2, number one. If we have a look, a closer look here. If I can get it into focus for you, there we go. We have an Intel wireless card, its model number is AX. 201NGW and we also have one 512 gig NVMe. This one I'm not too happy with its performance. I can't forgotten the brand of it again, but it's a fairly generic brand. And let's get to the main attraction of this, the cooling. So my understanding here is these are the VRMs, potentially the RAM for the graphics. And I'm pretty sure this, just going by the die size, is the GPU. So we do have a reasonable amount of heatsink on there. So, cooling the VRAM, or I believe it would be the VRAM. I don't really want to crack open the thermal paste just yet on this model. And also, if we do have a look at the fan size here, the fan on the GPU, I believe, is actually smaller than the fan on the CPU, which does, does seem to be considerably larger, which two copper pipes for the CPU. And one thing I did note during gaming is that this side over here would get noticeably hot, but it's just out of the perimeter of the keyboard. So while you're gaming, you're not actually feeling too much heat on here. Especially if you look on here, we also have more copper. So the, even though there's a large amount of copper pipes on here, it still doesn't seem to heat up your hands while gaming, which I definitely don't mind at all. And this side here is noticeably the hotter side compared. So what else to point out on there? So when you've got this disconnected, you'd be free to upgrade your NVMe, replace your wireless card, change your RAM. Another thing I do did note from the repair standpoint is the charger port on here. It does look extremely similar to a Zeus model charger ports. And it looks like you could almost get away with not having to actually physically remove the board to replace that. As long as you can get your hot air in there at a right angle, you should be okay. Yeah, that about concludes this one. So what I'm gonna do now is reconnect my battery, which is fairly straightforward. So we'll slide that here, slide it across just slightly, and then should just be able to pull it forward evenly. One battery reconnected. This little switch down here, I'm not too sure what it's for, so I'm not gonna bother pressing it. As we can see for the UEFI, we have a CMOS battery over here. And I believe, focus enough on this one, it may be a VBIOS or possibly a just standard BIOS chip here. Now I'm going to try and zoom you guys in and get a decent amount of light to actually read that because that does interest me slightly. Might interest you guys, but it interests me. So I'm going to zoom in, get some light on there. And I'm looking at it around the wrong way, which doesn't help me. Where are we? There we go. Giga device 25B127DSIG AP2KG1. So, what I'm thinking that could potentially be is either the VBIOS for the graphics chip. We go over here. Trying to see if there's any other BIOS looking chips, but that one does stand out to me the most. Or it's just possibly simply the UEFI. UEFI. Anyway, that's enough for my tangent there. Let's get back to it. So now all that's really left is to simply reassemble it, which is a little bit challenging on this one. So what I'm gonna have to do is with the IO over this side, I'm gonna have to hook this spot right here. So the 3.5 mil connector kind of needs to need to be slid over first, and then everything else should fall into place. Slide it over and angle it downwards. And 
That one there looks to be successful. As you can see, we're neatly around with the plastic up here and also on the type C ports as well. So from here it's a matter of just clamping it around as you go around the laptop. There we go. Clamp, 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 clamp. And now it's just time to reinstall your Phillips head screws. So from here, you may have to, after you put the screws in, you just might have to pinch the base cover with the keyboard. So open up your screen and do that. And that will should or will slash should get the plastic back into its original position. And it should be right from there. But hopefully this has answered a few questions you may have had regarding the GF65 Fin 10UE. Regarding its cooling, upgrade upgradeability, and how easily you can actually physically get into this machine. So that will do for today, and I'll see you guys in, the, in another video. Bye.